There's a look at Touchdown Jesus right here on the campus of the University of Notre Dame. The focus today, though, at the Irish Athletic Center, where Pro Day is underway, and we're joined by truly the big man on campus, <laughs> Joe Alt. Thank you for stopping by. Of course. Let's just start big picture. This is a unique process. Every year when we talk to student athletes that are moving on to the next level, I'm always curious about what this process has been like. The draft's about a month away. Just mm -hmm. how's the whole thing been going for you? You know, it's been great for me. I've actually been training back at home, so I kind of got to you know resettle in uh, back at home with my parents living my you know my childhood bed in the basement and I keep telling everybody you know I'm that kid living in his parents basement with no diploma and uh, no job <laughs> so it's been great I've really enjoyed it been able to see my siblings and everybody and uh, it's just been a, you know great for me to kind of uh, kind of get back from college, resettle in, refocus, and get ready for the next step. Yeah. Why that decision versus going to one of these like elite training centers in Arizona or something? Yeah, for me, it was uh, I actually met the guy who works in Minnesota. His name's Alex Boone and uh, Bill Welly, the the uh, running and lifting coach there, and kind of just fell in love with them and how they work and uh, really liked them as people. And uh, you know, it just felt like a great fit for me. And you know, honestly, it, being at home was just a plus for me. I think they are really good at their jobs and really helped me, you know, excel both in the combine drills and getting ready to play football at the next level. So it was a great choice for me. Something I'm curious about, Joe, I think we talked about this before, but you had three different offensive line coaches in three years. And I think on the surface, a lot of people go, that must have been tough. That mm -hmm. was a negative. But I think I heard you say everyone kind of gave you some different tools to put in the toolbox. So, And they're great offensive line yeah. coaches. Just what was the value of having three different guys just giving you their spin on offensive line in three years here in South yeah, Bend? Yeah, I think exactly what you just said, like the toolbox aspect. And everyone's going to kind of focus in on something different. You know, like some guys, it's all run some guys it's all pass some guys it's footwork you know for me just being able to kind of take each year and you know focus on those one thing those one thing each year and then just continue to add to my game I think was huge for me and allowed me to kind of grow in areas that maybe I didn't necessarily think about or spend as much time at so I got better at those things and just being able to take it all together and put into one now has been you know very beneficial for me when I think about like the offensive line I think of you know there's one unit but I do think the left tackle is if there is a debug position it's probably that one right i just think when you're thinking about leading an offensive line unit from that left tackle position how do you plan to do that at the highest level of the nfl yeah i think for me it's always the way i've always found my leadership being the best is always starting with like my on the field work and being you know uh, an example leader versus you know using my voice right away i think you know showing your hard work and showing your accountability and gaining the respect that way with guys who are veterans and guys who've been in the league is really important i think you know talking to other guys who are kind of making this next step finding a veteran who's going to kind of step in and taking under his wing is really important so I think you know my goal is just kind of not, not necessarily keep my mouth shut but, you know be quiet go to work and be that guy who's just dependable each and every day and then you know continue to find my voice from there okay I've got a question for you I know you've been in job interview mode here for the last few months yeah I, I want the unfiltered truth from you, okay? <laughs> all right I can give that to no, you. nothing crazy but I just I don't get to talk to a lot of guys that might be drafted in the top 10 yeah like I followed the draft my whole life as a kid you look who's going where yeah there's a whole industry around following the draft you're one of the names that gets thrown around at the top ten. Are you going on sites in the morning and seeing where is Joe Alt going to go? Who's a good? Who should take Joe Alt? Like, are you tracking it or are you staying away from it? My mom definitely is. <laughs> my mom is telling me something new every day on that. She's following my name on Twitter. I'm like, mom, I don't, I can't tell you anything. Like, there could be a trade two minutes before I get drafted. There could be a trade today. Like, I can't tell you where I'm going. So, like, I feel like if you really kind of invest in that stuff, you can get distracted. So, I've really stayed away from it. Like. When the time comes and I get picked, that's where I know I'm going. But from here till now, I just got to continue to work, and whatever happens, happens. But, but mom has you covered. Oh, mom's got me covered. Yeah. She's reading Twitter. She's getting mad at people sending articles. I'm like, mom, you know that's just a random person in his basement, right? Like, you what? don't have to get offended in a, by In a that. different basement. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not my basement. I'm like, mom, relax. The okay. article's like, why Joe Alt will be a bust. And exactly. Yeah, yeah, my, mom, my mom will be like, Joe, they said a mean thing about you today. I'm like, mom, they're going to say it. It's not the first time. It's not the last time. They're going to be mean. Like, you got to uh, get used to it. That's great. I appreciate the candor. Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious, too, from your perspective, when you think about the next, whatever, month, I mean, two months, right, to the draft, what happens? Do you just kind of like, you know, what happens between now and then? Are yeah. you just kind of still at home? Are you, what, what's the deal? Yeah, I'm actually heading back home Saturday morning. You know, for me, I'm just trying to obviously stay true to who I am. That's a hard work and really focus on, I'm going to give that three hours, that four hours every day where I'm on. Like, I'm going to be lifting, running, doing football work and trying to get as best I can be. But then after that, just kind of enjoying the downtime a little bit, spending time with my family, being able to go see my sisters and my nieces and nephews and just kind of being a normal kid again, you know, being able to break from college, you know, 
know, constantly going from school, homework, back to lifting, running, football, whatever it is. Now just being able to kind of be like, hey, I can go on my couch for, you know, an hour and take a nap and go see my sister or my brother or whoever it is and just being able to kind of just chill and enjoy this month because probably the last month I'm going to get here until, uh, you know, the season starts. And I know you talked to Caroline earlier and she brought up your dad. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize you mentioned he had you doing the drills oh, yeah. back in the day. So it wasn't just technique. What's the impact of that been? How well did you feel set up for this process? Yeah, it was actually kind of funny. We did a lot of work on like the L drill, the pro agility, and the 40. And uh, when I was in high school, and I started kind of working with him, and I showed up to the combine training, and my combine coach is like, ah, someone's worked here before. I didn't really get it at first, but he's like, you know, my dad knows, like, there's little, you know, tips and tricks or steps or things to do. And my dad kind of already knew that and kind of been through it. So I got some extra work at that in, like, high school just because he's like, you know, maybe someday you'll be in the combine. You might want to know these things. And it's also good to work those agility drills. So we would do those, and he had little tips and tricks. So it was, uh, it was really fun when I showed up, and he's like, my dad actually knew what he was talking about when we were doing those drills. It was pretty cool. Is it like, you know, you know, in tennis, I don't know if you watch tennis, but you see, like, the, the player, they'll do a point and then look to their box and, yeah. like, get coaching. Yeah. When you're doing the drills and stuff, you look up and see your dad, were you, like, getting oh, pointers today, just was, today? Yeah, today I was warming up, and, like, I was, you know, making sure I felt good and everything, and, like, I, you know, got my hands ready for drills, and I just, like, look at him, like, well, good, Dad? Am I good? He's like, yeah, you're good. I'm like, all right. It's always. And it's like, you know, for me, it's just that little boost of confidence. You know, he's been there. He's done it. He knows what's best. And just being able to get that, like, you know, you're ready to go. Like, that's huge for me, and that's really important. So so it sounds like Dad has you covered on the drills. Mm-hmm. Mom has you covered on, on Twitter. the tabloids. She's got Twitter down. She knows what she's doing on that thing. Yeah. No, she's good. Joe, appreciate you stopping by. Of course. Best of luck with the next month. We're looking forward to seeing your name getting called. Awesome. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. All right.